Hello everybody, I'm Richard Oldner and welcome to the channel. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff so you get notified when I post all these very cool videos. Today we're going to talk about small block forward heads, specifically two of them available from the guys at Airflow Research. I've tested lots of their stuff and they've always worked fairly well, but I'm going to tell you why I always recommend the larger 185 small block forward head over the smaller 165 head. And I know what you're thinking, Richard, what about on a mild 302 combination? Even on a mild 302 combination, I like the 185 head better than I like the 165 head. And here's why. To illustrate why I like the larger 185 Airflow Research head over the 165 Airflow Research head for the small block forward applications, obviously the best way to illustrate that would to show you a back-to-back -back test, but unfortunately I don't have that. So we're going to do a little work around here and I'm going to show you why I normally recommend that, why I have over the years always had better luck with the 185. The 165 is an excellent head and it makes lots of power and as we'll see from the flow numbers can support a lot of power but I just don't think there's any reason to go to the smaller head when the 185 head will give you everything that the smaller head does plus has the ability to grow dramatically more so as we'll see from the airflow numbers. But I'm going to show you two Dyna results I ran, one with the 165, one with the 185. But most importantly, we're going to pay attention to one particular spot on both of those curves so we can talk about why I think the 185 head probably is a better choice. So our first test was on the 165 head. This goes back to when I ran about 25 or 30 different sets of cylinder heads on small block forward applications. This particular test with the 165 was run with all of the smaller groups of heads and we ran it on a 306 inch small block forward. The Ford was equipped with, we'll go ahead and take a look at our test description, was rebuilt with Ford's pistons that had valve relief so that we could run the different cylinder different cylinder head combinations. We ran a Comp Extreme Energy 264 HR hydraulic roller cam. I'll go ahead and put the specs up. The cam was fairly mild. We ran a 650 Demon on top of an Edelbrock Performer RPM air gap carbureted intake manifold, a set of inch and 5 8 long tube headers. And we started things off with the factory E7TE heads. The only change we made to those were a set of valve spring upgrades so that we could run this bigger camshaft on those stock heads. And I think we might have also had um, roller rockers on this, like guided roller rockers so that we could uh, run this combination. But run in this manner with the stock head to give you an idea how much uh, power a good set of aftermarket heads are available like the 165 head. Our stock head on this combination, basically a cammed 302 with a good flat top piston in it, produced 306 horsepower peak torque 342 foot pounds and as you can see obviously something is restricting this combination because it made more torque than horsepower that tells us it's on the mild side of things here's what happened when we put our airflow research heads on there we put a set of airflow research 165s you can see from the very top of the rpm range up here past 5500 rpm we actually ran into a little bit of a valve spring problem a valve float issue and this could have been cured with more spring pressure but we did not do that at the time but even with that the airflow research heads the 165 heads pushed peak power up to 396 horsepower a gain of 87 horsepower Peak torque was also up as well, 378 foot-pounds. And I want you to notice down here in the area below 3,000 RPM, down in here, see that the 165 heads didn't gain a ton of power down there. But the important thing and for our discussion is that they also didn't lose any power compared to the stock head. That gives you a good idea that not only the head, it flows more and it has the potential to make a lot more power, which we would see from most ported heads, but also that it didn't lose any power down low compared to the stock head. So now let's take a look and see what happened when I ran the Airflow Research 185 heads compared to the stock head, but on a slightly larger combination. In our big cylinder head test, the Airflow Research 185 heads were tested with the next group of larger heads, and we also tested them on a larger motor to hopefully take advantage of what these heads with their additional airflow had to offer. So our combination here was a 333 inch stroker small block Ford. We had a 650 Demon carburetor. We had a dual plane high rise intake manifold. Uh, crosswind, which is a Edelbrock kind of copy. We had the Extreme Energy 274 camshaft. I'll go ahead and put the specs of it. Most of the guys are familiar. Same inch and 5 8 headers. 
The compression with most of the heads was near 10 and a half to 1, 10.4 to 1. And as before, we ran this first with the stock E7TE heads, which had already been set up with valve springs to allow for this kind of camshaft. And we optimized jetting and timing to make sure that this thing optimized power for every cylinder head combination that we ran. So again, the stock heads had the uh, guided roller rockers on it. So run our 333 run with stock E7TE heads, meaning unported, just the valve spring upgrade, produced 352 horsepower. So they actually did fairly well. And 400, right at an even 400 or 400.3 foot pounds of torque. Here's what happened when we put our Airflow Research 185 heads on here. You can see they picked up quite a bit of power. Peak power was up near 450 at 448. Peak torque was up to 445 foot-pounds. And what this tells me, given the fact we were making a little bit more power than we were torque with the better cylinder heads, which, by the way, flow almost 290 CFM, so they have enough to support closer to 600 horsepower or a lot more than we were making here. But the fact that the torque number is somewhat close to the horsepower number tells us that for this combination, we could use a lot more camshaft, and in this case, probably a better intake manifold as well, maybe a single plane. We could push power out past the 6,000 RPM range and start making some real serious power to take advantage of what these heads had to offer. But I want you to take a look down low here, again, down below 3,000 RPM, in this case, down below 2,800 RPM. And you can see that like the test we saw on the 165 versus this same identical stock head on the smaller motor, we saw no loss in power. We're only seeing minimal gains at 2,500 RPM on the load in, but we're seeing no loss in power. And that's what's very, very important to this in this comparison is the fact that both of these cylinder heads, even the bigger 185 head, lost no power at 2,500 RPM compared to the stock head. This tells us that this is a very good combination. In fact, it actually started gaining power over the stock head earlier than the 265 head, albeit that was on a smaller combination. So I think we would see a similar thing. My point is, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and put up the comparison between the stock head and the 165 head on the smaller combination. And you can see what I want you to do is I'm going to zoom in for you and I want you to look in this range right here. This is the torque peak. You can see again from 2500 to 2800 or so, neither one of those is losing power, but the gains are greater on the 185 head than they were on the, relatively speaking on the 165 head. Now we would have changed this a little bit had we tested them on the same combination. So go ahead and make a comment and say, yeah, Richard, but that's not the same thing. But it does go to show us that the 185 head is not losing any power to the stock head. Neither did the 165 head. The 185 head we know will support a lot more power because in the next section of this video, we're going to talk about the airflow numbers offered by both heads. Perhaps the easiest way for me to explain why I would choose the 185 head over the 165 head is to look at the airflow data because it gives us a pretty good idea on what you might expect if you ran these two cylinder heads on the same combination. So if we take a look at the airflow numbers supplied by Airflow Research on their website, we see that if we go through at a 200 valve lift, let's say where they're starting that, the 165 head flows 135, whereas the, the 185 head flows 142. So even at 200 valve lift, the 185 head is already outflowing the smaller 165 head. And if I go back, I went back and looked at the data that I have when I compared the heads on the same flow bench, from 50 thousandths all the way up through the lift range, the 185 head flowed better than the 165 head. So there's no gain in low speed. Now, both of them dramatically outflowed the stock head, which flowed about 166 CFM. And as we'll see, the, the 165 head flowed almost 100 CFM more, and the 185 head flowed way more than 100 CFM more than the factory head, which is why they make so much power. But even down low, both the 165 and the 185 head outflowed the stock head, but the 185 head everywhere from 50 thousandths all the way up outflows the smaller 165 head. So at 300 lift, we see that we have 195 versus 200 in favor of the 185 head, which is only a gain of 5 CFM, 
but there's not a loss at low lift. So that's a very important thing. Again, at 400 lift, we see 240 for the 165 head and 247 for the 185 head. Again, not a big jump, but not a loss. At 500 lift is where we start to see a big jump in airflow between the two. So we have 251 CFM for the 165 head but 276 CFM for the 185 head. So it's a gain of 25 CFM. Now at 500 lift, that's in the range of any kind of performance cam that you're likely to put in. Even a mild cam for a 302 is going to be 500 lift. In fact, the camshaft that I normally recommend is gonna be over 550 lift. So if we step up to the 600 lift range, we see a big difference, 285 CFM versus 255 and then if we keep going beyond that, we see that we have 289 versus 260. So we're talking about 25, 29 CFM more. It's quite a bit in favor of the 185. Then when you combine that with the fact that it never flows less than the smaller head and we didn't see a drop in low speed power compared to the stock head, that's why I would recommend the 185 over the 165. Okay, guys, make sure, remind me in the comments, Richard, you did not do a direct back-to-back -back test. How are you coming to this conclusion? Well, I'm using a lot of other data. Obviously, we're using the airflow data. The 185 head flows more than the 165 head at every lift range. That tells us it's going to be a pretty good head. And also, we're using the data that shows the 185 head did not lose any, any power compared to the stock head. Even down low, that tells us it's going to be a good, even low speed performer. The port size is right. The valve sizes are right. I've used them both dozens of times. I've never had anything but good luck with the 185 head. I've also had really good luck with the 165 head, but I like the fact that the 185 head outflows the 165 head at every lift range and it allows us room to grow because we know that that 185 head will support almost 600 horsepower if you ever decide to put it on a really serious Stroker. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. Make sure to comment and I'll keep testing.